the master class there are few guidelines that i would like to request you all keep your video on mute at all times so that we can save some bandwidth and keep your screen on speaker view to have a better viewing experience of this master class you can share your queries be it from the class or some other queries related to the course after the session and dr akram as well as our faculty uh, ms ankit dr ankita will take on each one of your query so kindly don't interrupt while the session is on so now i'll just share my screen give me a second i'm just sharing my screen now please confirm if my screen is visible to all of you yes okay thank you so um, first of all uh, welcome to this class my apologies that i forgot to welcome you all for this very special master class and uh, before we proceed with the class <clears throat> let me brief you about academically academically is one stop solution for global healthcare professionals seeking abroad migration and career advancement opportunities based in sydney australia the team academically engages with global healthcare educators healthcare industry experts universities and higher education institutions to provide demanding healthcare courses for global audiences on your screen is our founder ceo dr akram ahmed he is a clinical pharmacist and lecturer with over 10 years of teaching experience and research experience in various subjects of medicines his goal is to help and qualified healthcare professionals across the globe pharmacists medical doctors dentists nurses lab technicians physiotherapists to achieve their passion and dreams by migrating to their destined country so if we talk about our achievements you can see on your screen it's quite visible that we have a success rate of more than 90% and if we talk about the global reach it's more than 50 countries and already 60000 plus lives are impacted and apart from that we have a very extremely qualified faculty to take on each and every course and if we talk about today's session we have a very learned mentor dr ankita i would like to welcome dr ankita to come and introduce herself over to dr ankita hello everyone uh, it's a pleasure to see you all here i'm uh, loving it that all of you are so motivated enough to make your career path in australia uh, about me i'm masters in pediatric dentistry both my bds and mds i did from india and uh, mas uh, bachelors from manipal and masters from rajiv gandhi university bangalore after that i am into teaching and clinical practice and um, yeah about adc i have been there with the adc journey for last 3 years coaching candidates and uh, it's uh, you know when initially a, a candidate comes they are very apprehensive about moving ahead taking that steps so, so just we are there to navigate you all uh, clear your doubts and uh, if you are take this plunge to move ahead we are there for you about me yeah that's uh, a short introduction and we'll see more of the academic part of it in the master class course back to you ms yeah. bhakti 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ankita, for a very nice introduction. So we'll get back to you in a second, because now uh, first I want to introduce you about, I want to explain you about the ADC course followed by the masterclass. So as you see on your screen, ADC preparation course that is uh, provided by academically is designed to assist dentists with overseas qualification to prepare for Australian Dental Council exam. The course provides all essential study material, mock exam and guidance guidance for the students to ace this exam with flying colors. This course delivers free webinar on CV writing and securing your, your first job along with lifetime access. Um, it's not a lifetime access actually, it's basically till you clear the exam and book the exam. And if we talk about the ADC exam, clearing ADC exam is the first step to landing a dentist job in Australia. Both written and practical examinations must be successfully completed before the candidate applies for registration with Dental Board of Australia. You can take the written exam in your home country. However, the practical examinations are conducted in Australia. Once the assessments are cleared, you may fo focus towards the visa process. Who is eligible to take this exam? The eligibility to appear the ADC exam is mentioned. Like it, you need to complete your four year full time university dental degree or diploma from a recognized university full and unrestricted register registration in your home country and if we talk about the features of the course that is provided by academically it is 14 weeks of intensive sessions and 100 hours of live online teaching so we come up with the live sessions and then if we talk about the access you will have an extended course access to get all your resources to move for more than a year till you clear the exam up with uh, academically. And we provide you 1000 plus recall question to practice in addition to study handouts, mock test and final ADC exam grant test. And uh, if you talk about ADC exam pattern, the exam is divided into two parts, the ADC written exam and the ADC practical exam. While the written exam can be attended from the exam centers in India or your respective country, the practical exam need to be taken from Australia. The practical exam is conducted over two days in which the first day is assigned for assessing technical skills and the second day is assigned for assessing clinical skills. So this was all in brief from what academically offers you. Now I would like to hand over the screen to Dr. Ankita to take it on for the masterclass. I'm unsharing my screen and uh, ma'am will share the screen. All right, thank you, Ms. Bharti. Just give me a minute. So can you all see the screen, the uh, class screen, I mean the PPT? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So the topic I chose today to deliver is the most confusing, the most, uh, you know, that creating the uncomfort, you know, it's a discomfort creating topic in most of the dentists in decision making. Of course, um, medically compromised is a huge topic and um, we start in our, uh, you know, curriculum, the medically compromised the diseases, human disease, which is in Australia, it is taught as human disease with medicine and surgery somewhere uh, synthesized together. But human disease in itself is a big, big range. OK, it wouldn't be possible to cover it all but this is just a glimpse a snapshot of what adc expects out of the practicing dentists in their country some of their regulations and some of their expectations and how to cater treatments to them so i want to ask this question who are medically compromised patients how do you broadly say that these patients are 
legally compromised. Um, can you just make it the screen slideshow? Niche. Okay, um, I mean, blow, blow here. Yes. Yes. So anybody who is not healthy is deceased. All right. When we talk about medically compromised, that term in itself says this patient or this person is already a patient of some specialist and coming over to you for treatment. So for dentistry, I say as from the Australian background, they say that you are not treating the tooth per se. You are treating a person with teeth. And this person may have be having 100 ailments in the body. It may be a baby. It may be an, a very geriatric senile patient. And in the range of it, there are many medical conditions which come. Now, ADC has this a very creative way of asking you questions in which they will not give a simple 31 year old comes to you. They will say that a 31 year old patient comes to you with juvenile diabetes. Um, a 16 year old patient comes to you with a history of uh, some skin lesions. There, uh, there can be a 70, 80 year old patient comes with, to you with the hypertension and diabetes. So all this are embedded in the questions. And then you have to alter or do your treatment management of their oral condition. And then they will say they have a, this patient has a swelling in mouth. This patient has a dental caries in mouth. So how we will cater to this patient based on their medical history profile. That is our role as dentists. Moving on to what are the common systemic diseases? We have diabetes mell mellitus, which is the very common thing, uh, very common disease which affects oral cavity. And sometimes dentists can be the one who are the first to uh, send patient to the specialist or send the patient for blood tests to do checkup for diabetes. All right. And hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, bleeding disorders, asthma, medication related osteonecrosis of jaws. It's very favorite, favorite of ADC. OK, uh, liver diseases chronic renal failure, thyroid disorders. So more or less questions are framed on these nine conditions at, uh, by and large. How do these common systemic conditions, how do we cater to it in terms of, there will be some oral manifestations of these diseases. They may be there, may not be there. But our first signal to see is the clinical signs and symptoms which manifest in the oral cavity because of these conditions. An increase for oral health care because their, you know, the physiology is altered. Now it has become a pathology in the system. So we are catering to it in the sense of increased demand for oral health care. And Ma we need to can you just reshare your screen after unsharing and uh, reshare it? Because the whole screen is not still not visible. We can see the whole okay. complete. I'll stop sharing and then. I am resharing. And make it on slideshow. Now, still the same, ma'am. Is it on slideshow? See, no change. Is this on slideshow mode, presenter mode? Um, I'll stop sharing and once again share. Otherwise, I'll do it for you. Uh, just give me one more chance. No, 
move, ma'am. Let me share it for you. Yeah, please unshare, ma'am. I'm, I'm sharing it. All right. Uh, is it this one or previous one? Yeah, this one. And we need to modify the dental treatments for these patients. Also, we need to work on improving their oral health related quality of life, especially in terminally ill patients, because um, not having pain, full mouth, not having uh, to go through uh, added pain, which suppose a patient is having a terminal illness or severe immunocompromised states, they might have a debilitating oral condition, gross gingivitis, periodontitis. So in order to improve their quality of life, a patient who is going for scheduled for radiotherapy, it is very, very imperative upon us to remove all the foci of infection in these patients so that they have a better quality of life. That are the four major indicators or four major areas where dentists work for these patients. Swati, next slide, please. OK, so we are beginning with the sweetest disease, which makes the person people over sweet than they, the common population is, which is diabetes mellitus. Anybody, uh, what is, how do you cater to the patients who are having extra amount of sugar roaming in their body? A patient, Miss Elizabeth comes to you. She is mildly diabetic. How do you institute treatment? What will you, you all do? What information you gather? Anyone who loves to how do you practice in your country? What do you ask her? OK, uh, I make it still more simple or uh, explicit. Then I hope somebody can unmute and answer. A patient named Ravi visits you to the dental clinic 10, uh, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. And the patient says he has a toothache. He, when you check upon the history, the patient says the patient is 56 year old, and he says that he has come here to get the tooth removed, get the extraction done from you, and the history is diabetic, medical history. So how do you cater to it? Now, what is the next step you will ask? Do the painful tooth is say four six. Whether he's uh, on uh, anti-hypoglycemic drugs or whether he's on insulin. Okay, great. Excellent, Dr. Sahad Rashid. You broke the yeah. silence from the candidate side. Anybody either else? Her or he, either her or his blood sugar is controlled or uncontrolled. Excellent, Dr. Mohammed. So our first idea is to uh, know about the patient's uh, diabetes level whether it is controlled or uncontrolled okay and uh, uh, miss bharti next slide please so we know, all know that uh, the diabetes means over uh, these patients have more glucose in their body right the sh blood sugar levels are higher now we have these different tests for diabetes you know there is a fasting test uh, there is postprandial test, then there is a, a random blood glucose test. All these test ranges are given in the chart. I need not talk about the biochemistry of these. But what ADC mentioned, or uh, as Dr. Muhammad said, we have to find out if the patient's diabetic status is controlled or uncontrolled. This is a known fact. The patient is having diabetes, but Controlled or uncontrolled makes the whole lot of a difference. For knowing controlled or uncontrolled, the test given here is glycated hemoglobin level, which gives us the range of uh, means the patient has been maintained on what 
hemoglobin levels for long it is taken uh, like on average it gives you the range for last three months so seven percent or less seven the lucky number for many is less seven percent or less is good for proceeding for the treatment okay so if you do not know the patient's glycated hemoglobin levels uh, in australia you cannot proceed with the treatment as a general dentist you would have to need to send the patient to his medical practitioner ask the patient go get this test done come back to me and then i will proceed with um, the treatment right miss bhati next slide please okay so what are the oral manifestations of diabetes we all know it's the first commonest manifestation is gingivitis the second commonest is periodontitis anybody quickly can tell me gingivitis periodontitis what is the difference very basic loss of attachment in periodontitis excellent so we have bone loss loss of attachment as dr rasham mentioned in periodontitis in gingivitis is the just the gums are bleeding and sore and uh, that is gum inflammation of the uh, soft tissue but in periodontitis bone also gets involved and that's why when i said that sometimes dentists can be the one sending the patients to the medical practitioner to get the blood sugar levels analyzed we, we can be you know uh, the instrumenting uh, playing the instrumenting role in finding out they diagnosing their diabetes then after diabetes one more and risk of infections they have less immunity so the risk of infections are greater next slide please in medical ma and dental management of these patients we need to take a thorough medical history in thorough medical history we need to ask since when they are having this diabetes and what medication they are on uh, whether it's insulin or other hypo glycemic drugs and uh, what is their uh, if some are lifestyle uh, moderated diabetes they say that i don't maintain my diabetes so that cater of that diabetic or pre-diabetic patients can exist we have to take thorough medical history when was their last blood sugar levels done and patient in our outpatient settings versus we have to refer straight shot to the hospital again saying that if the diabetes is not controlled we will not proceed with the surgery or any elective dental treatments scheduling of the appointment as per the australian guidelines has to be in the morning so avoid lengthy appointments and give these patients morning appointments what is the common sense them uh, common sense behind giving morning appointment why not evening does the sugar shoot up in evening? Anyone? Sunset does something to the blood sugar levels. Why? Why such silly thing? Morning appointment. Why they are so hung about it? Because at the night time, the glucose get metabolized and blood sugar levels get decreased at the morning. Okay, excellent, Dr. Baby. Uh, excellent answer. And um, one more thing to add to this, that blood sugar levels, usually you find that hypoglycemia setting in, in mostly in the evening times. And uh, mostly it's a complication happening post-evening till dinner times when the patient faint when the patient goes um, severe hypoglycemic more than that if some something like this has to happen let it happen in the morning so that we have ample time to send the patient to the hospital medical emergencies can be best attended in the daytime the patient's uh, party which is the patient's family can be called and best management can be done during the daytime rather than the evening times when everything is shutting down so uh, another important reason why they say for all most most of the medically compromised patients just attend they give them the morning appointments and we have uh, use the anxiety reduction protocols 
and you can use nitrous oxide sedation uh, management protocols in these patients. However, you need to get a certificate uh, done in Australia after you clear ADC for using nitrous oxide, but you will avoid deep sedation techniques in uh, diabetes patients. Next step, please. Next slide. Okay. Consider referrals. Suppose if a patient is having an infected tooth and the diabetes is, uh, you know, not controlled or it's a complicated extraction of a third molar where uh, you find that uh, a swelling is there, which is increasing in size. So consider referring to the specialist or to the hospital directly, depending upon the situation. Because if swelling is increasing in size and the patient is also having diabetes, it's risky to give LA. Okay, so we would send these patients to the specialist oral surgeons who are working in the hospitals for the hospitals can best manage IV drugs, sugar levels of the patient, as well as do those extractions and save the patient. Monitor pulse, respiration, and blood pressure before the treatment. Have the patient eat a normal breakfast before surgery and take the usual dose of their medicine or insulin as per what schedule they are following. And keep following the maintaining the verbal contact with the patient during the surgery. Next slide, please. So during the procedure, this is the guidelines page as it is what the guidelines say. Check that the patient have had their meals that day and the patient is feeling well. So you would ask Mrs. Elizabeth, how are you feeling today? So they would tell you about uh, what is there. If they are feeling stressed or low or something, you have to blatantly cancel their appointment or postpone their appointment for that day. If the patient missed the meal, you would have to ask them to go out, have their normal breakfast and return for the procedure. Do not give glucose or do not give them any, uh, you know, uh, drink from your uh, part and do the procedure just in hurry buddy. You have to ask them to go and have their regular breakfast, what they eat. And if the patient falls ill during the procedure, just about the procedure then and there, assess the patient's status, medical status levels, uh, and call the emergency, which is triple zero 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 in Australia, and uh, do the first aid management of hypoglycemia. Usually, if it is syncope, hypoglycemic uh, syncope, it should after you know giving them glucose drink, reclining the chair, it should go fine. Otherwise, if it is uh, we have this in the upcoming slide, how to see the mild, moderate versus severe hypoglycemia. And otherwise, we have to give with the drugs, okay, glucagon syringe. And do not allow the patient to leave your care if they feel unwell or confused. After the patient, maintain, uh, patient has to maintain their caloric intake, activity level, and medications and provide dietary advice on preparation of soft foods if they are likely to have difficulty eating. So they are so specific about these guidelines. I mean, in the guidelines itself, they are so specific about how you have to uh, guide your patients. Management of hypoglycemia. So if it is a mild symptom setting in, just a little of confusion and uh, the patient is able to walk, talk, and just feeling a little giddy, just give them glucose drink. Moderate hypoglycemia, you have to administer glucose orally, monitor vital signs. And if symptoms do not rapidly improve, you would have to administer 50 ml, 50% glucose, or 1 milligram glucagon, IV, or IR. And consult the physician. You have stopped all the treatment. You are not proceeding the treatment, even if the patient asks you, doctor, I'm fine, give me LA and extract my tooth, I'm confident. No. If a patient has expressed or you have seen a uh, fall in the levels of sugar, some, uh, you know, something which is a red signal is raised, you will not proceed with the treatment. Then we have severe hypoglycemia. Again, it is IV drug, which is glucagon, I or IM glucagon. 
next we move on to after sugary sweet people in australia we move on to cardiovascular conditions those who are having ailments of the heart so which is the commonest ailment of the heart those who take extra tension which we say as hypertension so here in the picture is uh, uh, the lady with the perfect smile and the perfect blood pressure which is 120 80 but if shots up more than 140 90 it is called a, but a hypertensive patients now chronically elevated blood pressure for which the cause is unknown is essential hypertension as per the definition of it and mild or moderate hypertension the systolic pressure is less than 200 or diastolic is less than 110 Next slide, please. So how do we manage the mild to moderate hypertension? It is recommended that the patient has been to their primary care physician. Recently, they are having good amount of, uh, they are having the therapy, antihypertensives, and uh, their hypertension is well controlled. If not, defer the elective dental care. Monitor the patient's blood, blood pressure level at each visit and use anxiety reduction protocol. Avoid rapid posture changes of the patients in the chair. And in ADC practical 2 exam, it is, uh, you know, uh, they can fail you if you are doing the mannequin rapid posture changes. So uh, they, it's small things which their guidelines say but they are absolutely looking for who is following it and not. Next slide, please. And severe hypotension, where systolic is more than 200 and diastolic is more than 110, defer elective dental treatment for sure until hypertension is better controlled. And you would refer these patients for uh, to oral and maxillofacial surgeons for emergent problems. Next, please. After this, uh hypertension we have the gradient of uh, cardiovascular conditions which are angina myocardial infarction and congestive heart failure which symptoms and manifestations are more or less treated in the same way except for the emergency um, okay uh, one disclaimer i would say this is management of the medically compromised conditions in as an outpatient dentist dentist doing treatments in the clinics for if if angina pectoris medical emergency like attack of angina happens that's a separate topic in itself right that's a medical emergency setting in. so uh, there is a separate as per our curriculum when we teach designed is medical emergencies is separate. So moving on to how to cater to angina, myocardial infarction, or congestive heart failure patients. Next slide, please. Do not undertake dental treatment unless the patient's heart failure is stable. Limit the duration of the procedures. Patients with heart failure may not tolerate being placed in horizontal position, the dental chair, so the head is higher than their heart patients with severe heart failure are at greater risk of outcome adverse outcomes from sedation and ga so the dental procedures which require sedation or ga should be undertaken in the hospital with anesthetist present never in the outpatient settings avoid NSAIDs so if you want to avoid NSAIDs what drug will you give for pain relief. You cannot give ibuprofen in these patients. Steroids. Steroids for pain relief. Something else? Can you Paracetamol. Give? Paracetamol. Excellent, Dr. Anshul. Thanks for saying that. Yes, paracetamol is the drug for any uh, where, where contraindication of NSAIDs is there. They also say celecoxib, rofecoxib, which are COX-2 uh, selective um, anti-inflammatory and set class of drugs however wherever paracetamol is the option do prefer that in fact over these uh, selective cox2 ones also next slide please then another straight away cut 
stepped out from the therapeutic guidelines of Australia. They say that in the 12 months after myocardial infarction, stent placement or coronary artery bypass surgery, patients are at increased risk of a major adverse cardiac event. Defer elective dental treatment for six months after myocardial infarction, stent placement or coronary artery bypass surgery. So we are not touching the patient, not treating them after six months of any of these major things they have got done in their heart. If dental pain or infection occurs, suppose if a patient is having an infected uh, tooth and that there is an abscess developing, what would we do in these patients within the six month period? Provide emergency treatment in order to defer definitive treatment and consider seeking specialist advice. Australia runs on a lot of referrals. You are guided by most of the times I'm saying, do not do this, do not do this, refer. And uh, so it is, you are bounded to take care of the patient as a wholesome entity. That's why we are. Uh, sending a lot of patients to the specialists where we think risk of treating is higher uh, than benefits. Next slide, please. Then we have infective endocarditis. It's an infection which sets into the endocardium. That's the lining endocardial surface of the heart. As simple as that. Incidence in Australia is five per million. Okay. And the patient's reaching mortality in these five per million out of these five 20 to 30 percent mortality will be there so you say uh, one in these five will be uh, because of infective endocarditis setting in will meet a mortality because of this disease so what's the way out of infective endocarditis next slide please Now, uh, we have learned about endocarditis prophylaxis, antibiotic prophylaxis, so that whenever we are uh, touching oral tissues, when we are reaching the blood, uh, crossing the blood uh, barriers, okay, entering the blood region, uh, we should be giving antibiotic prophylaxis. And uh, which class of the patients? as per their heart condition, come into the category of giving cardiitis. This. So first, we are dealing with what are the class of the patients who have this increased risk, which we will read now. It is prosthetic cardiac valve. They have something prosthesis in their heart. Heart valve is prosthetic. The second is prosthetic material used for cardiac valve repair. So either the material is prosthetic, or the valve in itself is prosthetic. Previous history of infective endocarditis. Congenital heart disease, but only if it involves the following two, which are unrepaired cyanotic defects or repaired defects uh, with residual defects or adjacent to a site of prosthetic patch again, and rheumatic heart disease in high-risk patients. So these are the risk list of the patient per se. Next slide, please. Then dental procedures and which would require in these patients only. So if a patient is uh, out of this first list, there is no need to check on the second list, right? The second list is tooth extractions, third molar surgery, procedures involving insertion of dental implants, periodontal surgery, periapical surgery, and soft and hard tissue removal. So these are all things where we are crossing the barriers of the uh, mucosa, reaching the blood, there is exposure of the oral fluids into the blood where bacteremia can spread in. Okay. Combination of these two is where we are giving antibiotic prophylaxis. Next, please. And what prophylaxis medication is? It's a uh, whole world follows, not just Australia, amoxicillin 2 gram or 50 milligram per kg up to 2 gram maximum 60 minutes before the procedure. So when the patient comes in, you will give this pill, ask the patient to have it in your clinic and then proceed after one hour. If the patient is not able to take the oral medicine, you will first give, try to give in the range, in the order of it, amoxicillin 
same specifications im first then the second would be i ib the same amoxicillin or you can go ahead with ampicillin also again first try intramuscularly otherwise intravenously next please if a patient is sensitive to hypersensitive to penicillin what is the drug choice we would have for uh, these hypersensitivity patients is for the oral use cephalexin 2 g again 50 mg per kg 60 minutes before the procedure or if oral administration is not possible cefazolin or uh, cefazolin intramuscularly or intravenously can be given next slide please if the patient is having immediate severe or non severe delayed hypersensitivity choose you can also choose clindamycin 600 mg this is also for all the patients who need uh, antibiotics to cover any dental infection in australia clindamycin 600 mg given orally 60 to 120 minutes before procedure or if oral administration is not possible it would be iv 120 minutes before the procedure so this was about giving the antibiotic prophylaxis next thing about uh, is prevention next slide please now uh, there was a lot of you know uh, two lobbies were there whether to give antibiotic prophylaxis or not previously even for mild uh, restorations and all the dentists were so scared that they would be keep giving antibiotic prophylaxis to anybody who was in risk category of infective endocarditis but then they said the brushing in itself the daily tooth brushing is exposing to so much of uh, microbiota uh, bloom in the oral cavity if uh, the patient has to get infective endo endocarditis he would get it by the regular tooth brushing also so the thrust of giving care is more on prevention how do we do prevention for them is far more life saving than just giving them pills just before the treatment so they say that twice den yearly dental examination go for scaling timely treatment of all bacterial infections which is uh, pertaining to staph aureus or streptococci because these are the culprits of infective endocarditis beta lactam group avoid intravascular catheters and invasive procedures we are nobody to say that but uh, in the prevention the guidelines say that that has to be followed by cardiologists Uh, then strict adherence to the protocols for managing central and peripheral intravenous devices those who patients who are having it and active discouragement of tattooing piercing and iv drug use next please so this finishes our second league uh, mostly the cardiovascular ones moving on to respiratory disorders a very short two disorders i would be covering in the respiratory range and uh, next one so bronchial asthma and copd bronchial asthma uh, we all know the patient his bronchial system is getting spasm is getting spasmodic it's contracting okay and uh, the muscles the uh, bronchioles are hyper irritable in the there is irritability in the tracheal bronchial tree patient is treated by corticosteroids in inhalers so some patients would be on long term corticosteroids whether it's inhalers or sometimes maybe on oral uh, systemic drugs uh, they are on bronchodilators and beta adrenergic stimulators in copd what is happening is it is a group of diseases where air flow blockage happens there is constriction of the bronchioles and breathing related chronic obstructive pulmonary disease chronically the pulmonary alveoli are and the bronchioles are getting constricted and it includes emphysema and bronchitis so both range of uh, patients how do we deal manage them next please the common symptoms for both of them are cough wheezing cyanosis and the finger clubbing in the history and clinical presentation this would come out next so dental management in patients with asthma emotional stress factors can precipitate an attack 
so you would have to take a thorough history what are the precipitating factors of asthmatic attack any allergies you have to know them thoroughly if it is a stress factor be uh, accountable that dental treatment can itself be a stressful thing for many patients so you would have to ask them about their stress coping strategies and when was their last asthmatic attack and how do they manage it morphine is contraindicated in these patients bronchodilator inhaler should be available if you are treating patient with asthma and medical consultation with their uh, treating pulmonologist is recommended you have to as a dentist talk to speak to their uh, medical physician next please so what do the guidelines say defer dental treatment until asthma is well controlled and the patient has no signs of respiratory tract infection use an anxiety reduction protocol including nitrous oxide you can use but avoid the use of respiratory depressants so you are not using any of the drugs which produce respiratory uh, depression name a drug which produces respiratory depression which is used for anxiety control Dizepam. Dizepam. Excellent, Dr. Sahid. Uh, Dr. Akram, who is a pharmacology person who would be loving you for your answer. Now, Dizepam is the one which depresses the respiratory system. And uh, if we have a patient with a history of, uh, you know, asthma or COPD, we are not giving uh, these drugs usually in australia we give patient come with anxiety so um, there is a whole uh, you know segment of chapter in the guidelines on anxiety management where dizepam is the commonest drug given to the patients but here it is contraindicated then dental procedures in severe copd should be undertaken in the hospital just straight away save yourself refer the patient to the hospital next please okay so this was uh, the wholesome idea about uh, the, some of the three of the major most of the commonest uh, diseases which happen around in the population diabetes then we had cardiac conditions three of them and uh, then we had two conditions from the respiratory spectrum in australia following the guidelines referrals and not taking things and doing adventures at your hand is the dictum we follow. If you uh, like, if there is no point being heroic and uh, taking chance and the patient sometimes say, I have kids at home. I have, uh, please take the, pull out the tooth for me. But if the guidelines says no, defer the treatment, or refer to the specialist you have to follow that it's as objective as it can be i hope um, you got the glimpse of what we practice follow in australia and uh, there will be more for about it when you start the actual preparations and if you have doubts about anything spoken for now please uh, you can unmute raise your hand and ask We have a query from Mohammed. I can't read the name properly. Uh, you can just unmute yourself. Uh, Samira Musa, you have a question? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, you're audible. You can ask your question. Ma'am, you will teach us, uh, uh, you will prepare us about the written exam. And what about the practical exam? How will you teach us about the clinical and practical work? So practical exams are uh, given and taken in two parts. So for technicals, you would have to learn the technical skills, which is, uh, you know. But for now, we are catering to the ADC part one journey. Part two would be catching up as soon as you will clear the exams and 
actually we already working for edc2 right now we have a exam center in in, in india in kerala pushpagiri college of pharmacy those are indian graduates we will you know uh, provide them uh, edc coaching uh, there and uh, we will also try you know uh, as much we can the online okay so once you pass edc part 1 definitely we will help you in your edc2 as well right sir thank you ma'am thank you, thank you. yes dr uh, samira can you please unmute and ask your doubt hello assalam alaikum yes yeah, dr zaid assalam yes uh my question is that, that how can i exam for scd means you want to give the adc exam right yes adc exam yeah so what is your question i mean what is my question how yeah. can i yeah. do this okay so we basically provide it to the assistant like you need to basically first go for document verification by australian dental council then okay. you need to book this exam and this is online exam you can give in your home country so we provide coaching for this exam for four months okay yes and it is a online coaching so you need to attend you know from your mobile from your laptop desktop whatever you have okay. Okay, I am now in a wellness center. Okay, hmm. and now I am in a wellness center. What requirements you need for that exams? Only bachelor degree, bachelor of dentistry. Bachelor. Yes. Okay. To study in this exam. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. I want to ask that uh, is there need to have the experience of one year and two no years for clear NC part two? No work experience required. For both parts, written and clinical. Yes, in general. Okay. Basically, any healthcare practitioner, medical doctor, dentist, pharmacist, nurse, physiotherapist does not require to have any work experience. only lab technicians they require two year work experience mandatory for them rest of these uh, you know uh, any healthcare practitioner does not need any work experience not mandatory okay thank you thank you dr dhruv you can ask your question uh, yes sir uh, good evening sir good evening uh, yes sir uh, dhruv here huh? sir uh, yesterday also we talked about uh, the Uh, I discussed yes yesterday also the all the things uh, I understand all uh, even procedure. But just I want to uh, just the curious that uh, how much time it will take to complete all the procedure from start to end and up to getting the job. I mean, the total procedure, sir, how much time may it take? It is in your hand. It is in your hand. N nothing at uh, any time because this exam they conduct yearly two times, March and September. कितने मार्क्स का पेपर होता है कितने क्वेश्चन होते हैं इसमें Passing, yes, passing mark, passing percentage, sir. To pass yeah, ADC, so how much, how much marks I have to get? There is no mark. Basically, there is a mark. There is a grading. Grading. Yeah, they okay. have both. Yes. A and B. You will pass the exam. Okay. And if you got C or D, you need to repeat the exam. Okay. So if if we, uh, like, uh, अच्छा अगर repeat करते तो सर exam की fees वापस pay करनी होती है या इसी exam पे? Government free में exam कोई दिलवाएगी आपके लिए दोबारा आई अंडरस्टैंड सर आई अंडरस्टैंड गवर्नमेंट का जो फीस है वो तो आपको दोबारा देना ही पड़ेगा हां लगेगा ही लगेगा राइट राइट सर तो सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग दिस आई आई वांट टू कंप्लीट सर एक्चुअली सर माय माय एक्चुअली क्वेरीज आर नॉट कंप्लीटेड सर यस प्लीज आस्क हेलो यस सर सर आई हैव यस सर सर आप जैसे एडीसी पार्ट वन का जैसे एग्जाम क्लियर हो जाता है एंड देन एडीसी पार्ट टू के लिए सर कोचिंग भी यहाँ इंडिया होगी या वो वहाँ ऑस्ट्रेलिया आके ही करना होगा वो 
नहीं ऑस्ट्रेलिया में तो हम लोग ट्राई वैसे भी ऑनलाइन कराएंगे मैक्सिमम हम लोग जितना भी अच्छा। करा सकते हैं बाकी वी हैव एग्जाम सेंटर एट द पुष्पा गिरी डेंटल कॉलेज इन केरला इन केरला ओके तो वहां पर हम लोग प्लानिंग कर रहे हैं उनके साथ में हमारा एमएल कॉलेज के साथ में वहां पर नहीं तो वो आप प्रैक्टिकल की प्लानिंग बता रहे हैं सर यस सर क्या प्रैक्टिकल प्रैक्टिकल की प्लानिंग भी आप इंडिया में ही करवाएंगे लाल खान पे रुक जा ये भाई एक करके से बात करने दो 10 लोग बोलोगे तो बात करना तो पाई एक बंदा पहले अपनी बात खत्म कर ले देन यू कैन आस्क क्वेश्चन तो वी आर आई एम हियर फॉर 2 आवर्स ओके तो प्लीज वन बाय वन यस सर पुलिस का टीम तो सर बस मैं वो हाँ, जैसे पार्ट वन सर एग्जाम क्लियर हो गई तो देन सेकंड स्टेप भी पार्ट टू तो पार्ट टू में भी सर प्रैक्टिकल के आ, अलग अलग पार्ट है या ओनली वन सिंगल शॉर्ट एग्जाम है सर वो ऑस्की एग्जाम होता है ये ऑस्की एग्जाम में जो है बारह से लेकर सिक्सटीन स्टेशन होते हैं ना तो बहुत सारी तो स्किल्स होती है वो उसके अंदर देखी जाती है तो अच्छा। ये जब आप पास कर लोगे पार्ट वन तो ऑब्वियसली पार्ट टू का नंबर आएगा तो अभी तो वो इन सिंपल समझो कैसे क्या करना है उसका वो सारा आप ही टोटल गाइड करेंगे सर अपू देट एंड हम लोग गाइड करेंगे उनका एग्जाम सेंटर है तो वहाँ आकर देना होगा आपको अच्छा और सर आफ्टर आफ्टर क्लियरिंग पार्ट टू उसके बाद सर नेक्स्ट स्टेप बस वो लाइसेंस प्रोसेस हो जाएगा कि वहाँ वी आर रजिस्टर्ड फॉर द एडीसी देन जॉब्स ढूंढे देन जॉब अच्छा जॉब में भी सर आपका असिस्टेंस होता है और वी हैव टू डू बाय आवर एंड नहीं वी प्रोवाइड असिस्टेंस ओनली लाइक योर सीवी योर कवर लेटर इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस व्हाट आर द वेबसाइट्स यू नीड टू अप्लाई व्हाट आर द कंसल्टेंट्स हु इज हेल्पिंग फॉर द जॉब सो ऑल दिस असिस्टेंस वी विल प्रोवाइड फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट So we are an education company. We are not a consultancy or something. So we okay. are not a visa consultancy or something. We are our job to help you to clear the exam. Rest right, of the sir. things we are providing free of cost. So okay, I am here. This is the first time. I have been doing this for three hours. My session was going on. Our student passed the exam. Caps exam was done. Famous last week. So right, sir. For three hours, we were guiding them. They were telling them what to do next. How they have to register with APRA. You know, then jobs and visa, all those things. So we okay, guide our our all our students. ओके सर बिकॉज एक्चुअली मेरा ऐसा है कि बिकॉज सर मैं 2016 से मेरे क्लिनिक पे प्रैक्टिस कर रहा हूँ अब नाउ जस्ट मैं और वाइफ हम दोनों भी प्लानिंग कर रहे हैं एब्रोड मूव मतलब ऑस्ट्रेलिया मूव करने के लिए आई हैव वन किड आल्सो तो इसलिए मुझे थोड़ा सा डिटेलिंग जानना जरूरी है कि मैं अगर यहाँ का क्लिनिक अगर करके तो तो हमारे टीम ने कॉन्टेक्ट किया था नहीं किया था आज हाँ नहीं सर कॉल कॉल आया था उन्होंने बताई बात भी करी थी पर मुझे मतलब वही था कि एक बार मैं आपसे पर्सनली बात करूँ थोड़ा सा मुझे और कॉन्फिडेंस आया कि मैं इसमें आगे बढ़ू तो नहीं तो वो वही आपको बताते हैं इन जनरल मैं अगर कितने लोगों से बात कर पाऊंगा उनको नहीं आता है क्वेश्चन या कोई कनेक्ट विद मी नो नहीं मेरी बात से क्या हुआ आप खुद भी रिसर्च कीजिए कि भाई के जो है आपको होगा या नहीं होगा हाँ, हाँ, तो मेडिसिन हम लोग बात कर रहे थे अभी राइट तो हर चीज़ एविडेंस है आप उसका एविडेंस किसको दे सकते हैं सीख डॉट कॉम डॉट ए पर या लिंक पे आप जाइए वहाँ पर देखिए जॉब्स अवेलेबल है जॉब्स बहुत है यहाँ पर ये है की अगर आप किसी और रेडी टू वर्क इन द रीजनल एरिया जॉब मिलना बहुत ही ईजी रहता है बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वर्क इन यानी स्पेसिफिक सिटी और यू नो तो थोड़ा सा डिफिकल्ट रहेगा तो अच्छा रीजनल एरिया में तो जॉब इजीली मिल जाता है अच्छा रीजनल एरिया में सर जॉब में सर नॉर्मली डेंटिस्ट को क्या पे स्किल रहता है वहां पे वहां पे सैलरी ज्यादा रहती है अगर एस कम आप आईएनआर में अगर देखे तो ईयरली कितना हो जाता है सर अगर देखे तो जितना आपने इंडिया में 10 साल में कहोगे मैं 1 साल में हो जाता है यहां पर अब यहां पर होती है 1 सीआर प्लस 1 सीआर प्लस होती है ओके ओके और इसका एग्जांपल मैं आपको खुद दिखाता हूं बार-बार आप ऐसे क्वेश्चन कर रहे बच्चों वाले तो फिर डेंटिस्ट सैलरी डालोगे आप गूगल पे खुद ही आ जाएगा यहाँ पर यहाँ यहाँ कितना दिखाया इसने ये फर्स्ट जो लिंक है ये जॉब वेबसाइट है नंबर वन यहाँ तो ये बोल रहा है कि 175,000 टू 195,000 होती है डेंटिस्ट की सैलरी ओके 
तो आप खुद भी रिसर्च वही तो मैं बोल रहा हूँ आप मेरे से ही मत पूछो और एक चीज आप खुद हाँ, भी रिसर्च करो भाई के जो है क्या चल रहा है यहाँ पर तो यहाँ पर ये सैलरी होती है 175 या ऑन एवरेज सैलरी चल रही है तो मिनिमम है 155 और मैक्सिमम okay. 215 राइट राइट सर डेटा है इनका तो ये इतनी जो सैलरी आपको इन जनरली आपको मिलेगी और आपको एक्सपीरियंस पहले से बहुत ज्यादा है तो आपको सैलरी नो अच्छी मिलेगी इन जनरली राइट राइट सर राइट सर आप यहाँ पे जाके देख सकते हैं बहुत सारी जॉब अवेलेबल मैं आपको खुद भी आपके सामने ही दिखा देता हूँ क्वेश्चन कर दिए तो देखो ये डेंटिस्ट्री करके ठीक है पूरे ऑस्ट्रेलिया में सर्च कर देता हूँ देखो कितनी जॉब है यहाँ पर तो राइट ना कितनी जॉब अवेलेबल है आप खुशी जाकर आप एक्सप्लोर कर सकते हो बाकी ठीक है राइट सर ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर एक्चुअली क्या मी एंड माय वाइफ बोथ आर प्लानिंग सो दैट्स व्हाई ये थे देखो आपको कहीं भी आप जाएंगे आपको स्टेप तो लेना पड़ेगा वेदर इट इज ऑस्ट्रेलिया हो कहीं पर भी हो है ना और नो रिस्क नो गेन अगर आप रिस्क नहीं लेंगे तो फिर आप जहां हैं आप वहीं रहेंगे राइट तो ये मगर आप ऑस्ट्रेलिया में ये जॉब्स हैं और ऑस्ट्रेलिया का बेस्ट क्या है कि वो आपको पीआर वीजा को सिटीजनशिप दे रहा है वो ओके ये मैन है इट इज नॉट के जॉब करना है आप यहां पे आ रहे हो आप कहीं तो गल्फ में इफ यू आर गोइंग इन गल्फ लाइक सऊदी अरेबिया ओमान सर यूएई राइट सर आप वर्क वीजा पे जाओगे वर्क करके आप इंडिया को वापस आना पड़ेगा आपको पांच साल दस साल बीस साल भी रहोगे तो अभी यू टू कम बैक टू इंडिया राइट सर तो ये आपको सिटीजनशिप दे रहा है और जो आपने कहा आपका एक बच्चा है एजुकेशन फ्री होती है यहाँ पर बच्चों के लिए अच्छा ओके यहाँ पर फ्री होती है आपको कुछ खर्चा नहीं करना है यहाँ पर है नो तो बहुत सारे एडवांटेजेस भी इट इज नॉट जस्ट द सैलरी कितनी मिलती है मतलब टॉप यूनिवर्सिटीज है यहाँ पर टॉप स्कूल होते हैं उनकी उनकी एजुकेशन फ्री होती है यहाँ पर बहुत सारे दूसरे कंट्रीज होते हैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया में रहने के तो ओवरऑल अगर विद फैमिली अगर मूव करें हम दोनों हस्बैंड वाइफ दोनों डेंटिस्ट है तो एक अच्छी बेटर लाइफ स्टाइल हम पे मेंटेन कर सकते हैं अच्छे से आप एक दो साल आप जॉब करोगे बाद में यू कैन ओपन और जो क्लीनिक अगर आप हस्बैंड वाइफ दोनों यहाँ का डेंटिस्ट हैं तो तो बिकॉज यहाँ तो मैं एक स्टोरी बताता हूँ आपको लास्ट टाइम एक न्यूज आया था ऑस्ट्रेलिया में डेंटिस्ट्री को लेकर कि एक पेशेंट था तो उसको कुछ ट्रीटमेंट करा था उसको हंड्रेड का बिल दिया गया राइट सर एक लाख डॉलर का वो बंदा इंडिया गया हैदराबाद में और वहाँ दो वीक तक रहा पूरा ट्रीटमेंट कराया वो फिर वापस आ गया ऑस्ट्रेलिया में उसका पंद्रह हजार डॉलर खर्च हुआ ओनली एट्टी फाइव थाउजेंड उसने सेव किया तो डेंटिस्ट्री बहुत ही कॉस्टली है ऑस्ट्रेलिया में राइट सर ओके यस ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर और ऑस्ट्रेलिया में हेल्थ केयर इज फ्री बेसिकली नो तो यू नो नीड टू वरी यू नो नीड टू पी एनीथिंग और डेंटिस्ट्री को बेसिकली लोग पे करना पड़ेगा यस थैंक यू बराबर यस यस बाय बन आस्क सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये 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 था कि सर ये जो ऑनलाइन वेबिनार आप लोग हम लोग बताना था मानिए हम अवेयरनेस क्रिएट कर रहे हैं तो इट इज मंथली एक बार हम लोग करते हैं उसको वेबिनार को अच्छा If any of you have any scientific query like related to master class, we will take on that first. Yes, कोई क्वेश्चन है तो जन्नत के नाथ प्लीज अरबाई तो आप मैं डॉक्टर अंकिता इज ऑलरेडी ही है तो अगर yeah she is here just to take queries yes. please so if you have any query scientific query related to to, to the master class. अगर आपको कोई क्वेश्चन है तो डॉक्टर अंकिता के नहीं नो आंसर yes otherwise you know what uh, she can leave then I can you know take your questions. Yes sir. Sir I सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन मैम मैम आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग द कोर्स फॉर एडीसी पार्ट 1 दैट आइदर यू वुड यू लाइक टू गिव अस वी शेयर वी प्रोवाइड लाइव क्लासेस प्लस रिकॉर्ड करते हैं सारे सारे सेशंस को एंड देन वी प्रोवाइड स्टडी मटेरियल एंड देन वी आल्सो प्रोवाइड द मॉक टेस्ट फॉर द ईच टॉपिक सो ईच एंड एवरीथिंग यू नो नीड टू गो हियर एंड देयर सो वी कवर ए टू जेड यू नो यू जस्ट नीड टू फॉलो आवर सिलेबस and you can able to clear that exam and we have a mobile application uh mobile or desktop laptop hi sir uh, my question is uh, like a uh, uh, part to examination uh, in part examination what we will be doing on or uh, what OSC. basis o s c e yes please go and type o s c what is oski so part to exam is the oski exam 
so in india or pakistan this is not included in the syllabus in general uh, but malaysia and other countries they uh, basically the practical they do the for oski you know so for them is easier so oski in general they will ask they will give some uh, some case or some you know the problem you need to solve dr ankit are you here yes so if you can just you know brief about this question and then you can leave <laughs> otherwise you know a lot of question they will ask yeah okay so the oski exam is objective structured clinical examination they will create a scenario where an actual patient visits to you now this patient is a simulated patient the patient is not having an actual uh, diabetes but he will or she will say that i am having diabetes if there is a patient who gets unconscious who needs cpr so there can you cannot do cpr on a actual falling patient who is needing cardiac who needs cpr for cardiac arrest there will be mannequin kept for that likewise for local anesthesia if you want to test if they want to test your skill on local anesthesia they will not make you give local anesthesia on their live patient till you get registered so for that there will be a special mannequin where jaw um, like whole it's absolutely mimicking the body and they will ask you to give la and likewise there will be questions asked in case of communication part or there will be techniques where they will be judging you and it happens over a period of 2 days yes guys any other question yeah thank you ma'am sir how much time does it take for uh, uh, after the part 1 and part 2 uh, then the english exam the for the pr to uh, come sir for uh, getting the pr once you go pass part 2 exam then you are eligible to apply uh, uh, your your uh, like ui and visa for 194 91 visa Okay. Once you part pass ADC two, okay, then you need to apply for registration. Then you are eligible to apply. Next, please. Can I speak now? Yes, Doctor Sami. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just wanted to know. Uh, I have lost in touch with general dentistry since some time because I've been working as a specialist only. So, will there be any training given? Uh, you know, for as such in general dentistry. Yes, we will. We will cover A to Z basically. You know, whatever they are going to ask in the exam. So we need to, you know. Uh, so if you are not in the field, still you can cover. I mean, if you are doing, you know, uh, no. specialist thing, then still you can cover. Okay. What about the practical part? I mean, the clinical, where I've lost in touch. So whatever you know for the uh, part one, we will cover A to Z thing. So you know, no need to worry. Okay. We will cover A to Z. Okay. Whatever they are going to ask. In the part one exam. Okay. Okay. So each and everything we will take live session. Doctor Ankita ah. and another doctor is there. They will take live okay. session. And if okay. you miss any class, in that ah. case you will get a recorded session. Okay. And live sessions will be conducted in uh, where, sir? Ah. We have mobile application. Ah. Okay. LMS. Ah. We have LMS. Uh, learning management system. We have. So in your ah. laptop, you can you can access laptop or mobile phone, tablet, ah. whatever you have. Okay, sir. Uh, you were saying something about the Pushpargiri College in Kerala, right? So, uh, what will be provided there? Any classes? We have been working there. So, if, if if we got enough number of student in Kerala, oh. then we oh. will start. There is a center. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. Can I ask? Yes, Doctor Samira. Uh, sir, actually, when I was taking the website. Uh, it was showing around uh, like when I was checking the website in the ADC, it was showing around uh, some uh, Australian dollars that is around 8,000 Saudi Riyal, that is around 2 lakh Indian rupees for the total exams, all the exams. Um, the exam of yeah, whatever uh, exam you, you are yes, going yes. to pay directly to ADC only, not to us. We will only charge for the coaching only, rest of the uh, fees. For your school assessment, ADC one, ADC two, even for English, directly you need to pay to them only, not to us. You know, whatever the fees. But so uh, that, I think, hmm. 
the doctor so that means uh, whatever like extra you you were saying that around 8 lakhs we have to pay uh, academically no 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 coach. no whole saying is we only charge for our course only uh, uh, so how open, much is uh, you just talk to our team you you need to give a adc test because for... last time yes doctor because last time you had told me that it, it will be costing around 8 lakhs totally no it, it, it is a total cost you ask me a to z government fees uh, our fees English fees, ADC one, ADC two, each and everything in general. Kuch hai student ask for this. How much money I need? This is not for oh, us. Yeah. Okay. okay. That means it, it, it the the rest is including the visa okay. basically. Ah, so uh, including like visa also you were saying. Okay, okay, okay. Everything okay. basically, you know, like student ask in general question. For how much money I do I need? You know. Yes, yes, no, yes. No, like that. But okay. So one more thing, doctor. practical exam you said that you will only give coaching for the written exam but what about the practical no, exam no we are not practical but once you pass uh, this part one then we will give hmm. uh, we will definitely we give that one so uh, it might be you know like mixture online and offline so offline center we have already in kerala so we are working in kerala if we got enough number student then we will open in kerala otherwise we will okay. open in, in delhi okay doctor okay Okay, um, sir. What yes. will the first procedure for the those who want to go at the basic side? Can you please repeat again? Sir, I want to go at the basic side. I mean, I don't want to practice at there, but I want to go at the basic side, become a lecturer at there. So, what will be the procedure for that? No chance, no. Yeah, brother, at home, sit down. Job, where are they? Yeah, there is no number of college. Yeah, no. there is no lecturer jobs basically in medical science and and first of all the registration is mandatory even for faculty also if someone cannot work in a dentistry school without registration i in australia even dentistry or any other me uh, medical science you know so registration is mandatory you need to pass both exam get full registration practice here then only you can go for the teaching and teaching is very very competitive here because very uh, low number of colleges here you know uh, so i can say very low chance or no chance in the academics okay yes next yes. please so may i ask a question yes you can yes sir if someone passed part 1 exam uh, but uh, unfortunately couldn't pass second uh, part 1 part 2 So oh. for how much, uh, time part one is valid? Adhi has to within three years you need to pass part two. Once you pass part one, ready to pass one. Within three years you need to pass part two. Right, sir. So anyone else who has a question? Uh, hi, doctor. Hello, Adhi. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I know how long is this part one uh, coaching? Time? It is. Uh, it is around four months. It's around four months. So within four months, we are eligible. We can take the exam. Yes. So exam yeah. will be conducted yearly, uh, two time, March and September only. September. Okay. Yes. So if I get admission now, I can give exam by September. Yes. Hopefully. No, you need yes. to register because uh, April is the like they have mentioned the dates like skill assessment and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you can sit in the exam in September most mostly. So okay. once you join academically, then first step is the document verification by ADC. So we need to apply ASAP that step. If if okay. it is done on time, then you can sit in the September. Otherwise, if you late, then you need to go to the next year. Otherwise, I have to wait for the next year, uh, next March. Yes. Yeah. So if, if someone okay. wants for September, as soon as possible, need to start the uh, the document verification and then this exam. Okay. Then uh, once we pass the part A, then uh, when we can give the part B exam? Then you need to uh, 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 book part two again. Uh, so there is uh, some dates are available. Once you pass the ADC one, they will send you, you know, always emails on your email. Okay, yeah, these dates are this available. Part, uh, part two exam is in uh, should be taken from Australia. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. part 2 exam for mbbs doctor dentist pharmacist nurse physiotherapist anyone you need to be give in in australia because it is a uh, practical exam so you need to be in australia sabka jo part 2 hai wo yahi aake dena padega 
or part one you can write from your home country. Yeah, Sri Chandra Yadav, do you have a question? Yes, you can Hello. ask. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, we are from Nepal, and as I have heard that if we complete part one exam, then we are allowed to assist over there. Is that right, ma'am? Yes. So, agar if you pass part one, you can work as a assistant dentist. But if you have your own visa, means if you are coming to study here, for example, or any other visa like partner visa or any other visa, if you have. So if you have working rights, you can work in Australia as an assistant dentist and simultaneously you can uh, prepare yourself for ADC2. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. So any more questions? You can just unmute yourself and ask your queries. Uh, Dr. Kanmi, what's the duration period from part one to part two? Because I have arranged. Just a second. Yeah, because I have arranged the visa process. Because so I didn't get the question. Uh, what is the duration period from part one to part two? Because I have to arrange the visa process. I think uh, I don't know what she's asking, but in general, part one and then part two you need to pass. And once you pass part two, then you go apply for registration, then you are eligible to apply your PR visa. And then we have a question. Please unmute, guys, and ask if you have any question directly. Dr. Ankita, are you there? Or please, yeah, you can leave. You know, I can take the question. Yeah, I told her to leave because no one was asking the question related to the okay, topic. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, we have a query from Sony K. I think she has asked as well. I have done specialization. I just wanted to know whether we can directly work as specialist or general dentist. I'm working as a specialist since past 13 years. Yes, in that case, yes. we'll go to ADC website. There is a separate pathway for a specialist pathway you can, you know. Uh, but in general, uh, they are not uh, accepted that Indian degree or, you know, whatever you can think. So you need to go with this ADC. But you can apply yes, if at least pathway is there. If not, then you can go to, to, to the ADC. Yeah. One more question from Dr. Kani itself. Uh, hi, sir. On what basis part two examination will be? Like, what do we have to do in part two? I think this is already answered. Already that is practical uh, exam. Then Ida James, may I 